people have all been drawn together in the same heat of the second round of the men's 100 metres this evening. That's heat number four. Marcus Adam has also qualified. He goes in heat one and athletics restarts shortly before six. Favourite Merle Notti, she moved comfortably into the second round of the women's 100 metres, winning the first race of the Olympic athletics competition earlier this morning. The fastest of the 32 qualifiers for round two, though, was Otty's Jamaican teammate, Juliet Cuthbert, who won heat three in 11.14 seconds. Uh, Britain's one entrant, Stephanie Douglas, also qualified with a third place. She was behind America's Gail Devers in heat four. And Britain's Diane Edwards and Lorraine Baker both recorded their fastest times of the year to qualify for the semi-finals of the 800 metres as fastest losers. The fastest qualifier was Ina Evseva of the unified team, while defending champion Sigrun Grau and world champion Nora Dinova, uh, they both went safely through. Britain's third entrant, Paula Fryer, failed to make the semis, and those semis are tomorrow evening. Well, on the track later, uh, apart from uh, the sprint heats, the first round of the 3,000 metres. Yvonne Murray looking to improve on her bronze medal in Seoul, and earlier this week she talked to Paul Dickinson. Sorry. Yvonne, this season a lot of the talk has not been about you on the track. Has that taken the pressure off you a little bit? Obviously it has. Um, we've all been talking about Liz, and uh, it has taken the pressure off me a little bit, and I'm enjoying it. Um, it's great to go through the season and just concentrate you know, on yourself and your preparation, and it's been going exceptionally well. And the disappointment of Tokyo last year, is that completely forgotten? Yep, totally forgotten. I mean, I can't, cheat, I can't do anything about the past. I can certainly do a lot about the future, and that's what I intend to do. But presumably, the experiences you had in Tokyo, you must have learned from that. It's certainly toughened you up, if that's what you mean. <laughs> well, what about your training uh, to date and your competitive season to date? Just bring us up to date with uh, how things have been going. Um, I spent three and a half months away in South Africa between January and May, away from the Scottish weather. and. Um, I've only I've had about six or seven races, which is normal for a championship year. I think it's important that you go into championship hungry, uh, like as you call a caged up animal waiting to get out there and run, and that's the way I feel at the moment. So it's, it's gone really, really well. And you think the amount of time you spent at altitude is going to be a benefit? It was great to get away from it, say from um, Scotland, from the cold weather, but at the same time it was great to have a break away and to get used to the heat. Um, as well as running at altitude, and because uh, it's a novel experience for me, I haven't done it before. And I came back, um, gained a lot from that, and I was a lot fitter when I came home. So it's gone very well, I'm very happy with that, yeah. So all the groundwork has been put in, and now is it just a question of tapering off before the Olympics begin? That's right, it's very, at the moment, it's very easy work, and just building yourself up to a peak now for Sunday. What about tactics? Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the tactics you employed, obviously, in Tokyo. Yeah. You've learned from that. Have you got some positive thoughts now about the sort of tactics you're going to employ in the Olympic Games? Um, well, what will happen was, well, we'll actually watch the heats on Friday night, the other heats, and we'll assess the opposition then, and then we'll discuss and we'll plan the tactics for Sunday. But I'm very fortunate in that, you know, I've got so many different ways of running the race, and that the opposition just don't have a clue when I'm going to, I'm going to go, and that's a great uh, thing to have in your armoury, you know. And you feel really positive that your, your plans can work this time? Yep, totally positive, yeah. I just wish everybody else would be positive for <laughs> Well, I think you, you, you would certainly agree with the philosophy that one bad race does not make a bad athlete. That's right, and, uh, you know, as I say, it's history, and I don't want to talk about it, really. <laughs> okay, well, what about the Olympic Games? Uh, you're coming into the Olympic Games. You're in the village at the moment. Yep. Is it a tense atmosphere? Um, no, actually, it's quite relaxing here in the village because there's so much open space but you've got to be very careful with that because um, some of the athletes can become too relaxed and uh, the, the competition becomes a shock but you've, you've got to keep your mind focused on what you're out here for and that's what I'm doing and that's why it was good to come out that little bit later than the rest of the team and I've only got two more dates, well tomorrow and then Friday uh, before I compete to the heats and then the final on Sunday so I really don't have that much time to think about other things when I'm out here. What about the heat, is that going to be a problem? I love the heat. I love the heat. <laughs> um, no, I'm used to the heat now and I really do enjoy running in it, so it's not a problem. Well, I look forward to seeing you on the track and of course we all wish you the best of luck. Thanks very much. <laughs>